Welcome again to Midweek Prayer. Uh, this is uh, the last uh, Midweek Prayer for a couple of weeks. We will start again in August, I suppose it will be by then, uh, but we're having a bit of time off. O Lord, open our lips. And our mouth shall proclaim your praise. O God, make, make speed to save us. O Lord, make haste to help us. Glory to the Father, Father and, and to the, the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. Praise the Lord. The Lord's name be praised. Be thou my vision, O Lord of my heart be all else but naught to me save that thou art be thou my best thought in the day and the night both waking and sleeping thy presence my light be thou my wish be thou my true word, be thou ever with me, and I with thee, Lord. Be thou my great Father, and I thy true Son. Be thou in me dwelling, and I with thee one. Be thou my breastplate, my sword for the fight. Be thou my whole armor, be thou my true might. Be thou my soul shelter, be thou my strong tower. Oh, raise thou me heavenward, great power of my power. Riches I heed not, nor man's empty praise. Be thou mine inheritance, now and always. Be thou and thou only the first in my heart. O sovereign of heaven, my treasure thou art. King of heaven, thou heaven's bright sun, O oh, grant me its joys after victory is won. Great heart of my own heart, whatever before, still be thou my vision, O oh, ruler of all. reading is from Mark's, Mark's Gospel. King Herod heard of the healings and other miracles, for Jesus' name had become known. Some were saying John the Baptizer has been raised from the dead, and for this reason these powers are at work in him. But others said, It is Elijah, and others said, It is a prophet like one of the prophets of old. But when Herod heard of it, he said, John, whom I beheaded, has been raised. For Herod himself had sent men who arrested John, bound him, and put him in prison on account of Herodias, his brother Philip's wife, because Herod had married her. For John had been telling Herod, it is not lawful for you to have your brother's wife. And Herodias had a grudge against him and wanted to kill him. But she could not, for Herod feared John, knowing that he was a righteous and holy man, and he protected him. When Herod heard him, he was greatly perplexed, and yet he liked to listen to him. But an opportunity came when Herod, on his birthday, gave a banquet for his courtiers and officers, 
and for the leaders of Galilee. When his daughter Herodias came in and danced, she pleased Herod and his guests, and the king said to the girl, Ask me for whatever you wish, and I will give it. And he solemnly swore to her, Whatever you ask me, I will give you, even half of my kingdom. She went out and said to her mother, What should I ask for? She replied, The head of John the baptizer. Immediately she rushed back to the king and requested, I want you to give me at once the head of John the Baptist on a platter. The king was deeply grieved, yet out of regard for his oaths and, his, and for the guests, he did not want to refuse her. Immediately the king sent a soldier of the guard with orders to bring John's head. He went and beheaded him in the prison, brought his head on a platter and gave it to the girl. Then the girl gave it to her mother. When his disciples heard about it, they came and took his body and laid it in a tomb. A prayer. Loving God, help us to find you even in the depths of human failure. Give us courage to come to you even when that means facing our own darkness so that we may find the light of your transforming love and serve you more faithfully for Jesus' sake. Amen. Today's gospel makes grim reading. I have to admit that I have avoided preaching on it over many years, but let me have a go today. We're told that Herod uh, feared John, knowing him to be a righteous and holy man. Herod liked to listen to John, held captive in his own prison cell. And Herod was greatly perplexed by what he heard. Perhaps Herod sent something of a light and freedom and wholesomeness in what John said, compared to the constraints of his own uh, situation of uh, corruption, darkness uh, and moral compromise. Herod was somehow, even in all of this, drawn to the light. But he was in a difficult position. He was a, a puppet ruler appointed by the hated Roman overlords of the country. So Herod wasn't popular with his subjects. And he'd further antagonised not only John, but many faithful Jews by running off with the wife of his brother Philip. And it all comes to a sordid climax on Herod's birthday. He throws a party and through it seeks to carry favour with the great and the good of Jerusalem and Galilee. And part of the entertainment was to have the young daughter of Herodias dance for the assembled guests. I think in the passage she's called Herod's daughter because she had become his property by marriage. <laughs> I know it gets worse and worse. And I think we can probably imagine the atmosphere of drunken lechery in that part at that party, out of which Herod makes extravagant promises to the young woman and then gets himself into really hot water. Herod is caught by his own promises. The story is so depressing and so much illustrates the posturing of the ego, particularly the male ego. I think that's why I hate the story so much, because I can see, sadly, some of myself in Herod. And the passage shines a light on things about myself that I would 
rather not be aware of. I'd rather sort of cover them over. I would like to excise it, to cut it out of the Gospels, but it's there for uh, important reasons because it speaks to uh, thing uh, to the way God does not shrink back in horror from the things we do as, as humans as humans. God does not shrink back from our pride, our arrogance, our abuse, even our cruelty. God is still there. God can still be found when we turn back to him in the depths of our mess. The mess we make of our own lives and of other people's lives. Let me offer you an image in your mind um, because it's the image that has helped me. I tried to find the image on Google, but I, I can't. But it comes from a, a film about uh, Jesus of Nazareth. Um, and we see Herod sitting on the dungeon steps. In my mind, he's on these steps with light above and darkness below, down into the, the dungeon where Paul, uh, Paul, sorry, where John is imprisoned. He sat on the steps listening to John and there is something very vulnerable about his posture. He's let go of all the sort of swaggering um, and posturing that he normally inhabits. Maybe he feels he has to live out, but he's just, he's just himself. He's really a little boy sat on the steps. drawn to the light of John but to, to go towards the light means going down into the darkness to return to the light as he feels it is to just go upstairs carry on with his life business as usual and there is something very honest about that moment and of course honesty God can work with question is, will he dare to go further into the darkness in order to find true light or not? Sadly, he does not. Sat on the steps, he's sitting on the fence. To respond to John, he needs to go into the darkness and face all the all his deviousness, his cruelty, his brutality that he feels are necessary to prop up his reign. Sat on the steps, he's there in that position between the light and the dark. Going down into the darkness means facing the mess that he's in, facing his sin, his failure, really the corrupt, uh, corruption of the political system that has enabled him to find power. But even in that darkness and mess, God has a way forward, I believe, for Herod, for everyone. There is always a way forward. It won't be easy, but there is a way forward. For Herod, it meant facing the the mess of um, betraying his brother uh, and the reasons for his marriage to Herodias, we don't know. Maybe she was a, a younger seeming woman or something, we just don't know. And there's also the potentially abusive relationship that he has with her daughter. <sighs> we can get ourselves into terrible messes. I've done that <laughs> more times than I'd like to remember. But there has always been a way out with God. God longs for our honesty. He's always drawing us, 
drawing us towards the light. He draws us to the people we know who serve God. We see something of God's light in their lives. And, believe it or not, and I sometimes don't believe it, God is drawing other people through the light that they see in our lives. God's love is always drawing us. But we do need somehow to respond to that love. And, you know, it doesn't have to be a very obvious way. God sees the, the slightest movement of our hearts. And I think that's all it takes. Another problem with this passage is that God doesn't step in to save his faithful servant, John. Sometimes God doesn't do the things, do things like this. Uh, sorry. Sometimes God does step in to save people, but I think more often in the Bible, in our lives, he doesn't. And that does not seem right or fair. God ought to step in to bring justice. But why? Why? I suppose you can find justification for that in the Bible. Uh, the scriptures give us a, a, a range of, of, of windows, of, of ways of seeing things. And we need to choose which one we go with. There are places where we are told that if you do right, God will bless you and all will go well with you. If you do wrong, things will go badly and it will all end up in failure. But I think reading scripture as a whole, you can't really justify that. Um, there is a recognition all through the Bible that evil people can prosper and the righteous can suffer terribly. It's not comfortable, but that is reality. Jesus, who did no wrong, was falsely accused and taken to an agonising death. So we need to find a way of embracing the fact that good people do suffer. God doesn't want that, but it happens. And we can find God even in this. Find God in the suffering of the innocent. Uh, and find that God shares the pain, their pain, our pain. God is more in the sharing of the pain of injustice, the outrage, uh, the, the uh, appalling uh, situation of, of corrupt systems, corrupt leaders, God is all in all of this and God calls us to, to receive his light so that we can do a little. It may feel a tiny little, but God will use it in making things just that little bit better and fairer. Because when we do this, we bring about God's kingdom. That is God's kingdom coming when we we move against, we, we challenge, we, we change injustice. But very much my theme is facing darkness, having the courage to face darkness in ourselves and in, in systems around us that oppress and abuse uh, and so much more. And finding that God is there for us in all of this and wanting us to to face the darkness with him so that we, God in us, God at work in us and through us can bring more of his light, more of his kingdom, more of his transformation as we share light with others in practical ways. 
may God inspire us to face up to these challenges and to live for him and for his glory. situations where there is despair and pain. We bring to you our own times of despair. Help us to be open with you about how we feel, offering to you the times when we struggle in all sorts of ways. Help us to talk with those we need to and to feel able to seek appropriate help. Help us also to be compassionate listeners when others share their pain. God, in your mercy, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. We pray for those in despair in our own city, those who've been rejected, those who are abused, those who are homeless, those trapped by poverty, those in crisis. We thank you for the organisations and individuals who attempt to alleviate this pain. And this week we especially pray for the Gleadless Valley Food Bank volunteers. God, in your mercy, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. We pray for those we know living with the pain of bereavement, illness, waiting for treatment that will be delayed, those who are scared for themselves or others, those who are confused, those who are exhausted. We pray for all those making decisions about the next months that will affect us all, that appropriate ways forward will be agreed, and where we need to make our own decisions, we will remember our neighbour as well as ourself. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for our world still in the grip of Covid, and as so many in Canada and America have witnessed this week, hurtling towards disastrous climate degradation. We pray for places affected every day by climate change, where harvests fail, 
there is no drinking water, yet too many floods. We pray for leaders and the people who can affect change, that what was agreed at Carbis Bay will become reality and for what will be decided at COP26. We thank you that others have stepped in to provide aid, but we ask that the government will increase again overseas aid spending. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. prayer. We pray for those places where every day there is danger. This week we especially pray for Afghanistan and Zimbabwe. We pray too for those who are, who are persecuted and whose lives are in danger because of their faith. God, in your mercy, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. In the midst of this, we thank you that we can hold on to your light and share it with others. Amen. Gave up everything for me Suffered at the hands Of those you had created You took all my guilt and shame When you died and rose again Now today you reign In heaven and earth exalt Worship you, my Lord. You have won my heart, and I am yours forever and ever. I will love you. You are the only one who died for me, gave your life to set me free. So I lift my voice to you. In adoration Set me free, 
So I lift my voice to you in adoration. God of love, who alone brings growth to your church, send your Holy Spirit to give vision to our planning compassion in our recovery, wisdom to our actions, and power to our witness. Help our churches to grow in numbers, in spiritual commitment to you, and in service to our local communities. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Creator God, you made us all in your image. May we discern you in all that we see and serve you in all that we do through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. O gracious and holy Father, give us wisdom to perceive you, diligence to seek you, patience to wait for you, eyes to behold you, a heart to meditate upon you and a life to proclaim you through the power of the Spirit of Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. And so may God give us grace to face darkness wherever we are led into it, trusting that there is light to be found. Your light will shine in our darkness and shine through us, even in darkness. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you always. Amen. And go in peace to love and serve the Lord. In, in the, the name, name of Christ. Christ. Amen. Amen. And thanks for joining us.